So I think I know why you're here. You've just created a new local branch in Git and you want to push it up to a remote repo like GitHub, Bitbucket, CodeCommit, something like that. And you're probably hitting a, a fatal error that says the current branch has no upstream branch or something like that. Well, I can fix that. I can fix that quickly. And if you're just here to get the command to fix it, you just do this command here. And it's just a git push with the dash u or dash dash set dash upstream parameter to it. And that will take your new local branch and push it to your remote repo without a problem, assuming that all of your credentials are in order. So that's the short answer. <laughs> if you wanna actually see me do this, replicate it and actually fix this problem live, stick around. It's only gonna take me a few minutes. I don't like wasting people's time, but I would like to show you a demo of this. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief at theserverside.com and you may know me from uh, some of my short form Git tutorials solving people's difficult problems. and. This isn't a difficult one to solve, we'll solve it quickly, but it is a common one. And uh, hopefully I can step you through this and get you to lo love Git once again. I've got a repo up here, CameronMCMZ slash git dash branch examples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the GitHub URL for that. I'm gonna clone that locally. I'm gonna create a new branch. I'm going to put something on the branch and I'm gonna try and push it back to GitHub and we'll see if I get that current branch has no upstream branch error. And if I do, well, I'm gonna fix it. So there we go. I just uh, copied that Git URL. I'm gonna mosey on into this folder that I've got called underscore repos. I'll open up that Git bash shell. There we are. And I'll just do a Git clone. Right, I'll just bring that repository down. And I am assuming that you've got a repository that you can push and pull with, with other branches, right? Like it's just this new branch that's causing a problem, right? If you've got a new project and you wanna push that new project that doesn't have, that isn't associated with any Git repos at all, um, I've got a Git remote add tutorial that you can find on YouTube that'll answer that question. But I've now got that uh, repository down on my local machine, it's cloned. I'm just gonna do a CD get started, get into it. And all of a sudden I'm now inside this repo. I can do a git branch dash A. What does that tell me? Well, it tells me that I've only got one branch. That one branch is the main branch. Uh, there's two remote tracking branches, but one's just for head, which points to origin main. So I've got one branch, the main branch. And you know what? If I was actually go to GitHub, click on the list of branches, you can see there's only one branch up on GitHub. Okay, so everything is fine, right? Like everything is as it would be expected. Now, let's create a new branch. So it's git branch and we'll call it the new branch. So that creates a new branch. If you don't believe me, I can do a git branch dash A and you can see new branches there. I'm not on it, I'm on the main branch. So I gotta do a git switch. Some people do the git checkout, but we're getting away from checkout. The new way to do it is switch. So I'm gonna switch to that new branch and you can see it says new branch in brackets over there. So. I know that everything is working. And I'm gonna do a little LS. I've got Adam Baker Carroll. Let's add devo.html. And I'm just gonna do it with a touch command. That just creates new files if they don't already exist in a given folder. And if you don't believe me, well, there you go. Devo.txt has been added. I could touch echo.txt. Uh, HTML as well. I mean, I could do this all day. Um, but the point is I've got a new branch. I've got some new files. You always do the git add command and then you do the good old git commit dash M. And what will we call this new branch local to remote repo. I don't know. That's a, a long commit message. But the point is we've got a new branch and we want to push it up to this server up here. How do we do it? Well, the uninitiated might do something like this. They might just say, hey, uh, git push origin. Nothing wrong with that normally. Usually works just fine. 
but there we go fatal the current branch new branch has no upstream branch to push the blah 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 so it actually tells you what to do here it actually says it says look this branch doesn't exist on the server um, you're trying to just do a push and we don't know if this branch should actually match to a branch with the same name or if there's some funny business like maybe this branch and the branch it maps to have different names you can configure that in git it just says you've got to actually tell git what branch on the server this branch here is going to map to and we'll just keep everything the same so i'm just going to say git push and then it's dash u or dash dash set dash upstream i mean if you really want to conserve keystrokes you can just do dash u that's up to you then you have to say um, origin the name of the remote server that you're going to and then the name of the branch and our branch is new branch that's the new local branch that we want to push to the remote repo in this case it's github it could be gitlab it could be bitbucket okay so i'm going to do that git push dash dash set upstream origin now i have already authenticated so i don't have to create a new github token or anything like that right i've been pushing and pulling and you can see here it says hey everything's good if i do a git branch dash a you'll notice that there's a new remote tracking branch that was there before so remote slash origin slash new branch and that's a remote tracking branch for the remote branch on the server but you know I'm from Missouri I really like to be shown if this is working so I'm going to do a refresh over on github and again this will work on gitlab bitbucket code commit and there you see that new branch there up on the server so everything seems to be working just fine and of course if I come over here and add a new file and what's after e fred maybe fred.html I don't know hello fred remote push working I don't know commit it there do a commit message now we've got Fred on the server but Fred is not on the client side now all I have to do is do a pull right so it's just a git pull origin boom we can see Fred being added down there and again um I could touch golf.html, touch gold.html. I like that even better. Git add dot, git commit dash m, gold to push to remote. <laughs> push with some gold. And now I can do it, just do a git push origin. And boom, it works. Notice I didn't have to do the set upstream again. You only have to do that the first time that you have that branch and you push it up to the server. So at this point in time, everything seems to be working just swimmingly. And I am super happy with the fact that my branch, my local branch, my new branch, uh, has been pushed to the remote repo and it's all working just great. So that's good. Now, I do want to lecture you on something, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got sort of an issue with you if you're coming to view this tutorial. And my issue is this. Why are you using git at the command line, right? Like, why aren't you using uh, a git tool? Um, I, I've done, I, I, I'm going to bring up git kraken here. And I'm not paid by git kraken. I don't get money from git kraken. I just think Git Kraken's an awesome tool. I got a, a long form crash course tutorial on Git Kraken on the server side. Check it out if you wanna see how this tool works. But um, I'm also a big fan of, of SourceTree from Atlassian. I'm a big fan of GitHub Desktop. I've got tutorials on those too. But the point is, all of this stuff that you're messing around with, how do you push this branch? How do you tag a commit? How do you stash? Like all of this stuff is easy if you just use a tool like git kraken so here i've connected my github repository to git kraken it's a rock paper scissors repository and i'm going to see if i can actually find that repository there's the rock paper scissors repository there I wonder how many branches I've got. I got my new branch there. I got dragon feature fix. There's a lot of branches on this uh, remote Git repo here. And uh, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to create a new branch. And uh, 
I'm going to call it the mad at you branch because I'm mad at you for not using a Git GUI tool like Git Kraken or GitHub Desktop. Um, and then we just click this push button. I love pushing people's buttons. Click submit. And it's going to think about it. It's going to kick, connect to GitHub. It says push successful. And now if I come over to this tool and just do a refresh over here, all of a sudden I can see the mad at you branch. So, you know, that's my question. Like, why are you not using a Git GUI tool? As I said, doesn't have to be Git Kraken. I, I'm a big fan of Git Kraken. I'm a big fan of GitHub Desktop. I'm a big fan of, of Source Tree as well. The tool allows you to do everything visually. I mean, look at this git commit history graph that it produces here like who wouldn't be impressed by something beautiful like that boy that uh, that puts the Paris subway system to shame doesn't it um, my point is you know you really should be using a, a, a GUI tool like that it's gonna make your life so much easier you're not gonna have to go and watch these tutorials from people like me telling you how to push a local branch to a remote repo like github so definitely use one of these tools. And by the way, I do think I mentioned that I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials about Git and GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, DevOps tools, Java, Python, Scrum, Agile, Java, you name it. Um, so head over to the server site, check out some of the tutorials we have over there. And in fact, I've got a full detailed tutorial on this topic there as well. So check that out. Also, I've uh, written a couple of books, so I'm the author of Hibernate Made Easy. So if you're doing Java or JPA development, check that out. I also wrote a book on The Simpsons a little while ago. It's all about the fact that Springfield in The Simpsons is actually based on a small town in Toronto named Pickering. Um, the highway that goes through the town of Springfield in The Simpsons is the 401. The town that goes through Pickering is the 401. There's a lot of other neat similarities uh, there. And also, I'm working with a, a young freelancer over on the server side, Darcy DeClute, Scrumptious on Twitter. And uh, she's just written a great book on agile and Scrum-based development. It's a Scrum Master Certification Guide. I highly recommend it if you want to learn more about Scrum, more about agile, and also get certified, uh, improve your career. Uh, go pick that up. Uh, all of those books are available on Amazon and they're highly recommended. Uh, I did mention her Twitter. Um, I got Twitter too. So if you want to follow my personal antics, you know, you can always follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ. And I don't know, the last thing I would ask is, you know, why don't you, why don't you subscribe on, on YouTube?